Hey everybody, it is Vex here, and uh, got another video. This, tonight I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, the swamp map. I uh, haven't made a swamp on on YouTube before, or so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, so you can see how I do that. Uh, it's very similar to the um, Savannah map, to be honest, except we'll be adding a little bit more water features. Uh, I do like using the forest clearing and using these these green grass. Uh, I instead of making it thick though, I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna use the sparse one. And once again, uh, to get that 25 by 25, I'm gonna stack six of these. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and. Mark the edges of my map again, just because I find it easier. We'll wait a second for the white to load in. Come on. Oh, there it goes. Now we'll... One there. One, two, three, four, five. That's 25. And one, two, three, four, five. That's 25. There's Right there. So that's the edge of our map. And just like we did before, I'm gonna go ahead and group these. Edge. If you if you haven't watched that other video, I'm gonna be referencing it quite a bit. Uh I'm gonna go ahead and add this dark dirt texture on top of uh, I gotta wait for it to load. Come on. There we go. Right there, and then I'm gonna This oh, opaque. I want to. I want it to look kind of muddy, but not so muddy that it's. That's probably good. And I'm gonna group that with the grass. I'll just call that grass for now. And that's the idea. It's gonna look kind of kind of muddy and murky and nasty surface because you're walking through a swamp. Uh. And the swamp that I usually have in mind is kind of like the swamp in uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, what is that? In the, the Two Towers, I believe, that Frodo and Sam and Gollum are stomping through the swamp. Uh, the next thing I want to do, actually, is go back over here. And we're going to use this, this tool, and we're going to add water. Now, I like one of the darker waters makes it easier because I think I'm gonna use this calm one though I don't want to I don't want to use these light ones definitely don't want to use the tropical one and we're gonna make it a, a, opaque anyway when we're done but uh, so I am gonna do a camp variant as well uh, cause I believe that's what I planned on doing. Yep, day night camp. So, uh, I'm gonna leave a spot in the middle where we can make a camp, a small camp. Um, but I am gonna make some watery areas. Oh shoot, I I just realized I did something wrong. Okay, if we're going to make it opaque, what we have to do is kind of use just one layer, which is kind of annoying. Um, I might u try using the puddle tool. I cannot remember what blurry... I'll, I'm going to turn blurry up just to mess around with it. Uh never seen me use this tool it's an interesting tool yeah blurry's doing exactly what I want I wanted kind of a blurry edge that's that's perfect um, so there's that watery area I'm gonna make another one like that 
And then maybe one more right here. That looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, just those three. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and group those. Obviously, just call them water. Oh, I never, didn't I? Oh, I, it's because I undid grass. Okay, back on the water. We're going to go ahead and lower the opacity. That looks pretty good because I, I want a little bit of the swamp to show through. And now we're going to start adding some objects and stuff on top. Uh, I am going to go down to the... It's odd because we're working in a swamp, but we're going down to the jungle podium thing because a lot of these work really well. So I'm going to add some of these. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of stick to grid so I can stick it wherever I want. Uh... Not going to stick a whole lot out in the middle of the water, but on the edges a lot. Because I want to kind of, I wanted a fuzzy edge, but I don't want a fuzzy edge all over. Um, and now I am going to stick some lily pads, but not as many as I would on like a, a water map. And I just realized I should probably be doing random angle. Okay, I am going to stick some of this on the edges. Now, I want to go ahead and group. Well, before I do that, let me see if there's any other water foliage that I want to do. Maybe a few of these, the little scr scattered lily pads. Um, but I want those to go underneath everything. So let me drag them down here. Uh, like right there. Right there. Okay, uh, I think that's what all I want to add. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and group these. Water. Plants. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to go back here, and I am going to stick some more of these in, so it isn't, we're not completely done with the water. But I'm going to do a lot of these reeds around the edges. Uh, this particular swamp is maybe a little bit more alive than the than the one from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> uh, the one that was filled with undead. Let's see. Now. Um, 
normally if I was doing a river map, I'd probably throw some flowers on top of some of these lily pads because it looks cool. But since it's a swamp, I, I don't want it to look flowery. Okay. Uh, we're going to call these reeds. Not reds, reeds. Because that's exactly what they are. Okay, and now the question becomes what kind of other features might be we see in a swamp. I don't think we'd see like many trees. Um, so maybe just one tree, and I'm going to kind of try and make it withered. And uh, I don't know if you've seen me do this in another map, but I'll pick a tree that looks kind of... Excuse me. It looks... I don't want to do any bushes, I don't think. Let me uh, let me look at one of my other maps. The other swamp map I did. Uh, I did do a bunch of colorful bushes on that one. I'm not sure I really like the way that looks. Oh, I could do some of these. Some of these other foliage around the edges. You can see I did a lot more reeds on that one. But I'm doing this one a little bit different. That one I didn't do any trees. This one I'm going to do a little bit different. So to set it apart because nobody wants the exact same maps so no bushes I am gonna do uh, not these ones I think it's the un they're in the underdark that are like slightly browned uh, gotta find them here no they're not in the underdark one okay where are they they're in the desert no Fall. Yeah, they're the fall colors ones. Okay. I made them a little more brown, which makes sense. Okay, so just going to go around and add a couple more of these just kind of around. Just kind of mix it up. Now, I think we may do our withered tree up there, up in that corner. And it won't really be withered so much. It'll just look a little sickly or something. Um, and the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to do one of these trees. I mean, it's also they're also the same as these trees. They're exactly the same color. I'm going to do it... Um, I don't like that one. I'm going to scale just a little bit. That's the size I want. I guess I should group these first. This is brown. Okay, and then we're going to... Let's do our stump first. Uh, I'm actually going to... Let me... Yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so we're going to do the stump first. Then I'm going to go down to, oops, it's a uh, ancient tree here. I'm going to do, I'm going to mess around with this ancient tree stuff, I think. So that's our stump, but these are, these are way too big. Let me take the scale down to about 40. Oh, that's too small. 65. That looks good. And now I'm going to do a custom angle. Let's, uh, let's first of all, let's flip it horizontally. There we go. So the idea being we've got a couple of these. Oh, the, except those are the exact same size. Hold on. Flip horizontal. Let's uh, make this one quite a bit smaller. Okay. And then... Uh, to use some of these weird branches. Um, let's take this down. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to make it bigger. Ooh. 
A little too big, maybe. one that make it smaller go like that that's probably good I don't want to overdo it and so then I'm gonna stick this want to I kind of want to cover up that little that dark brown and then we're going to do another one much larger where that this is kind of like the canopy of the tree I think are we going to use this one or do we want to go ahead and use the one I originally planned a little bit bigger but uh 25 is what I originally planned. Right there. Okay, so this is. First of all, we're going to add our shadow to our regular arrangement. And then go back and make it. So I'm going to. So to make it even more here what the way I want I'm gonna I'm gonna take the opacity back a little bit more than I usually do which makes it look like there's even less foliage I guess but it looks like there's a whole bunch of wild roots and stuff going on with that tree which is the idea that I wanted um, you could actually let me ungroup this you can actually get rid of the stump itself but I don't think it looks quite right without the stump, personally. Um, and you can also get rid of this this void if you don't like that. But I again, I don't really like the way it looks that way either. So this is the way I do it. Um, I might even take this void. I wish I could rescale it. The other way I've done it is with the, the actual tree. And use like a tree down there, but it doesn't look right, quite like right either. I like the void though. That like, uh, to be honest, it it just looks like a stump. And, like that's what people see. So, uh, so we're gonna group that, call that stump and roots. And then we know this one's our tree. We don't need to group it with anything else. And the only other thing we need to make is a camp. And then we're ready, well, I need to add the, let me go ahead and add my square, my key square. I'm going to put it down here in this corner. And then we're going to do our camp. And uh, we'll put it up, yeah, we'll put it right there. In the... Let's see, so we're going to go back to our camp tokens. And we'll start with the fire as per usual because it's much easier to figure out where everything else is going to go. My scale's way down. We're going to do a normal sized fire this time. And uh, let me get rid of stick to grid, but I am going to actually stick this one in a grid. But uh, that looks about right. That's where I want it. Um, we're going to go ahead and not do any weird campfire details or anything like that this time. Well, maybe a bucket. Bucket sounds like fun bucket over here um, and we're gonna do a tent I think I'm gonna do the tent over here uh, or I could do it right here uh, maybe I'll do I think I may do this square tent and do it right there. And then I like I like the idea of doing it at an angle. It looks
looks fun down here. I think there's a big there's a big blank spot there. So like the pavilion don't have too much blank space, especially not for a uh, a swamp map. Yeah, let me do random angle. And you don't want them too close to the fire, but you don't want them too far away. That that is like the exact same angle. I'm just gonna get a new angle. There we go. There we go. I'll delete that. I put one over there just so I had a. Uh, I think that's all I'm gonna do for the camp, though. I'm not gonna do a, like a whole bunch of stuff. Just enough. Okay, and we're ready to extract. Uh, once again, uh, I'm gonna extract one, one with, one like this, then one with the grid, then one with the camp, and one with the camp with the grid. Um, and that is so I can do gridded ones and non-gridded ones. And we're gonna get our our margins right. That's where we want. Gonna do a hundred pixels. So Uh, let's see. Um, so this is our first one, and it's just swamp O2. Is it O2? I think it's O2. I think I only have one swamp variant so far. Yep, swamp O2. No camp, no nothing, no grid. And then we're going to do that again with the grid. <clears throat> And for those of you who've watched several of my videos, I think by now you should see that, that um, making these maps is, is not super hard. You should be, if you want to make your own maps, you really can. Uh, I include, that's one of the reasons why I include so many maps with each of my, uh, my expansions or uh, expanded areas of Tomb of Annihilation or, or, uh, uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage is because the hard work isn't really making the maps. The hard work is putting the adventure stuff together, the the encounters and the um, the monster variants and stuff. This is grid. Now we're gonna turn the camp on. Um, but yeah, like making these, these, these maps is not that hard. And, uh, if you're not doing commercial maps, uh, that is maps that you intend to sell with a, some sort of product product, you're just making maps for yourself. There's literally, I don't know, close to a hundred last time I checked, uh, different things you can download, uh, from the Dungeon Painter Studio Steam Workshop that gives you thousands of assets to build from um and it's you can use combinations of them you don't have to use just one set i use just the dungeon painter studio stuff or the excuse me i use just the two minute tabletop stuff because uh my maps are commercial or they're going to be um i, I sell them with a pro uh, product so uh let's see this is swamp camp and then we're going to do that again grid but yeah the uh you've made if you've made lots of things uh, you can use uh that is different sets and different uh assets from different artists and stuff to 
make your own maps that look your own way and you are completely within your rights to share those for free or use those for free in your own games it's just when you try to you try to sell them for money that you have to be very clear on you either have permission from the artist or uh you have um or you're using a commercial free use asset pack so there we go those are our four i probably should have saved before i did that but i didn't i always forget this is why i end up missing my dps source files or forget to uh or i forget to uh save these photoshop files okay drag those in and go ahead and delete there we go and i'm gonna go ahead and rasterize just in case i need to edit those layers but i don't think i do and we need a darkness layer, a darkness layer for the camp, a firelight layer, and then, oh, actually, I don't need this layer for the two-minute tabletop. I can just drag it in when I open it. Um, so where is my... I'll drag this in. If I drag it from here, I get the uh, the little black background, which I, or the black outline, which I forgot. Uh... I've forgotten in a couple of my videos. I've been copying and pasting in. And if you copy and paste, you just get the the layer itself. You don't get the, the FX that does that black outline. If you're wondering why it looks different. Uh, where did that drag in? It dragged in on top. Okay, that's perfect. So this is going to be firelight. This is going to be darkness fire and this is just darkness and these two I'm going to put them at 50% and we'll go ahead and paint brush both of those this one we're going to create a layer mask and once again I've got my usual HP brush final from the durian set which you can download if you search for durian paintbrush set I i'm 90 percent sure it'll send you to deviant art which is where you can download it for free uh, so i'm gonna zoom in and get a little bit and once again i'm if you've never seen me do this i do this in lots of videos uh i'm i did a black layer 50 percent opacity then i clicked this button here that creates a layer mask and then on the layer mask, I'm going to paint black so that it takes away black. It's just the way a layer mask works. And I'm going to go out to the edge of the dim light, which is probably uh, out to there. And then we're going to kind of make a circle. Now, obviously, the light's not going to go past the tent. The tent will create a shadow. Uh, I obviously am going to have to fix the edge over there. I made it too narrow. Uh, I still, I'm going to go out a little bit over here. That's, that looks circular, kind of what we want. There shouldn't be anything blocking the light except for the, uh, the tent. And now we're going to go out about halfway. Again... The light won't go through the tent. That looks pretty good. Now I just fill in. And 
I don't want it to be perfect. I want it, I want kind of it to look like flickering fire, and that's the only way I know how to do it, using the smoke effect. And I'm doing one smaller circle. And then I'm going to click a whole bunch right here on the fire just to get rid of any kind of darkness at all. Because that's where the fire would obviously be the brightest, and it just looks right. And you can look up here in this corner, and you can see how it looks like the light is kind of traveling from a from a distance. Like if I zoom out. And that's pretty good for that layer. What I'm going to do next is add the firelight. I always do that by selecting a kind of orangish color. And then I go about eh, right there. And now this one is opposite. We're not using a layer mask, so we're going to start from the inside and work our way out. So I'm going to do a small circle, let go of the mouse, go out about a little bit more on the top there. And then I like to keep it kind of solid here, so I fill in a lot. And then let go. And go back out to about where our other circle is. Um, and again, it's not going to go through the tent. and everything in. Sorry about that. It's a trap. That was my phone. Somebody just sent me an email. Because email is a trap. And again, I kind of click on the fire and get a little bit more color there. It's just a thing I do. I don't know if it's really necessary. And then I'm going to slide the opacity down to around 50. That's still too much. Uh, 35 to 40 is usually where I end up. Let me look at see what 30 is. 35 looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click it. Set it at 35. That's what I'm looking for. It's just a li I just want a little bit of color. Um, not a ton. And now I've got all my variants all ready to go. I've got, uh, if I turn off everything except for the bottom layer, that is the swamp during the day. Swamp during the day with the grid. Swamp at night. Swamp at night with a grid. Uh, and then I have the two other night variants, which are uh, the swamp with a camp and swamp with a camp with a grid. So that's the idea. There's six maps there, all in one Photoshop file, ready to go. And uh, that's how I do it. Uh, I hope that was informative. I hope somebody learned something. Um, and at least you now know how I make my my swamp map um, and you can use similar methods using all you have to do is mess with the opacity and you can change colors of things um, or you can actually go in and make your own assets that are different colors uh, which I do sometimes so have a good night everybody